personality. Personality is part of tennis. It has been said that if you play tennis with someone for an afternoon, just one afternoon, or if you talk to that same person for one hour for every afternoon, every day of the year, you'll find out more about the player and their personality by playing tennis with them for one hour. So many examples. It's been said that you can judge someone's style of play by the way they drive a car. The baseliners are going to be a little defensive, where the net rushers are going to be a little bit offensive when they, they hit the road. So many different personality tests. Are you a squiggly line? Are you square? Are you an A, a B, uh, a type A personality? The Myers-Briggs personality, a, a mother and daughter in the 50s, they, they certainly added to uh, many psychologists' work and came up with a simple tool. It's not really scientifically validated. It's still used every day on college campuses. Uh, John Niednagel has taken the Myers-Briggs, and I would recommend going to his website, where it's braintypes.com. That's brain types plural. And John Niednagel has taken personality brain typing to another level. But initially... Just to go through the Myers-Briggs, you want to, one, know yourself. Two, you want to know your players. Three, you want your players to know their players. And then the club coach, I guess even the college coach up to a certain extent, you need to know the parents. The story behind a great tennis player, there's always a story behind the story. It's very interesting to know what was the personality or personalities of the, the mom, the mom and dad. Very quickly, just an overview with the Myers-Briggs. And again, Niednagel, his work went all the way to the cover of Tennis Magazine. Find out if your players, through your own observations, but even through a questionnaire, are they an extrovert or an introvert? An extrovert will get their energy from people. An introvert gets their energy from within. Many times we misjudge someone. Jimmy Connors, he's an introvert. Where when he was on court, he seemed very extroverted. Sampras, just the opposite, seems introverted, but he's an extrovert, gets his energy from people. With, um, and then again, Need Nagel's book, uh, he writes about so many athletes, all sports, past, present. With, um, an extrovert can handle more stress. An introvert is uh, more focused. Um, an extrovert generally is geared more for uh, team sports, where an individual likes, I should say, an introvert likes individual sports. To know that, when you're talking to a group of kids and you have an extrovert or several extroverts within a group of 10, you know, hey, I'm going to make this short and sweet. We've got to get right back to work. So a little bit of talk and a lot of action. And that's a good rule of thumb anyway in, in, in tennis training. You send an extrovert to the backboard. They are bored in 10 minutes. You send an introvert to the backboard, they can stay there for a long period of time. The next is you're either an S or an N. S is for sensate, N is for intuitive. The letter N is used because the letter I is already used for introvert. With, if you're a sensate, your awareness level is very, very great. In other words, you have that sixth sense, the name of uh, Justine Hennon's Tennis Academy. You know what's going on around you. You're totally aware. You're in the moment. An intuitive person, and there's positives with every category, an intuitive person is more of a long-range thinker. They're thinking down the road. They have a tendency to choke and get a little nervous because they get ahead of themselves. But people that are intuitive have a better chance of understanding what all coaches want. If I do this today, I'll be able to do that tomorrow. The next category is the easiest one to identify, from my point of view, is a person is either a feeler or a thinker. F or T. Now, the feelers can think and the thinkers can feel. Um, if you're working with a feeler, they need a really strong support system. They're going to have a tendency to have that poor me syndrome. They're going to make decisions more with, with their heart and their head. They're not going to problem solve as well as a thinker would. Um, and, but again, a, a feeler can show more emotion. A, a feeler sometimes digs down and, and has that ability to fight and fight sooner. Um, the last one is you're either a J or a P. A J is a judger, P is perceiver. Judgers are hardworking. Judgers like routine. 
and a lot of tennis players learn out of routine. So say, for example, you're coaching a 12 and under player, and you know they're a J. They like routine, they like control, not flexible. Very easy for them to get in the trap of just being a baseline pusher because they find a system that works and they stay with that. Tennis is a random sport and that's where the P can juggle a lot of balls literally and do a lot of different things. And tennis requires to be able to play back of the court, front of the court, all over the court. So anyway, we'll talk more about uh, personality testing. A good example, and I, I wa have athletes all the time watch sport movies. Um, Herb Brooks, late Herb Brooks, who was the coach of the 1980 Olympic hockey team, took a group of college kids, and they, they beat the powerful Soviet team. The movie Miracle. A scene in that movie was Herb Brooks having his players fill out uh, surveys, personality questions. And Herb Brooks said to a committee and said to fellow coaches, I don't want the best players, I want the right player. Um, an example of that would be, you know, you have a team and you have an introvert and extrovert, you're better off to put an introvert and extrovert together playing doubles than two extroverts. The deuce court we've talked about, you take more returns in the deuce court. The introverted player has a tendency to be more conservative, more consistent. The extroverted player has a tendency to be more flashy. And there's so many reasons on who should play the left side, who should play the right side. But again, personality comes into tennis. And we'll talk more and more about that as we go along. So I'm working today with Miron Mann, and Miron asked me to just add a couple more thoughts about personality and how do I use the Myers-Briggs or how do I recommend people that I work with use the Myers-Briggs. Let, let me go with parenting, for example. I work with a young 12-year-old, a young 12-year-old girl, and she's got pizza position pulled down on the serve. But she's written down on a piece of paper that she wants to play high-level Division I college tennis. And then I ask questions, and she signed up for a doubles tournament in three weeks. And she's invited a friend to stay at her house, and it's going to be a fun time. And I suggest to the mom, I said, no, the future is now. She needs to not play that tournament, and she doesn't need to go another minute being pizza position pulled down. Well, and again, it's not to put someone in a box or be judgmental. It's just try to figure out who you're talking to, how it's going to work. And if so if someone is extroverted, they're thinking about people. And if they're a feeler, they're thinking about people's feelings. And they're saying, gee, I don't want to ruin the party. I'm not going to say, well, no, let's not play the tournament. That would be just one example. Um, when it comes down to self-talk on a tennis court, an introverted thinker is typically going to have less self-talk than an extroverted feeler. You know, you don't hear people say, feel on your feet. You've got to be able to think on your feet. With um, a feeler, is going to have a tendency to just wear it on their sleeve. They're going to be an open book. With sitting down with someone and say, hey, you know, you're a feeler, but you got to learn how to think. The other one would be recruiting. With um, knowing that, gee, I have these returning players and these are their, their personalities. I'm recruiting these players. And it's a puzzle and can it be exactly the way you want it to. But no, I, I, but I do think from a recruiting standpoint, when it comes down to um, selecting a, a brain type of personality, if you can get an ISTP or an ESTP, again, brain types, uh, that's one thing about Neen Nagel's work. Um, like a Sampras is an ENTP. The Myers-Briggs, he's a planner. And then you think, gee, you know, his tennis career, it was planned. I mean, he made changes in his game when he was young. He was watching films of players. He planned ahead. He didn't plan on being a great junior player. With uh, Federer, like Sampras, he's an ENTP. But the longest list of great champions is ISTP. And, you know, when it comes down to, say, Edberg and um, McEnroe, they're both ISTPs. Very, very different. But 
why are the, why are the ISTPs, Neurotulova, Labor, so many uh, great ISTPs, they can focus. They're in the moment, so the eye they can focus, they're introverted, they're not distracted. An E on a tennis court will look all over the place. They know who walked in the front gate. They know the score on every court but their own. But so eyes can focus. S, that means they're in the moment. They are totally aware of what's going on around them. They're like the kid in basketball who wants to take the shot. They're a thinker. They're a problem solver. And then they're a P. They're random. They can take a risk. They can mix it up. So, again, the personality typing, brain typing is more for the motor movement. But for me, just to share a couple thoughts, brain typing will help the parent uh, know more about themselves and more about their child. Um, it's very interesting that when it comes down to parents, we all know that opposites attract. And so if you use a system, it's very simple, and you find out you're talking to parents, and gee, you know, one spouse is an extrovert, the other is an introvert. You've got a feeler who married a thinker. One's a P, one's a J. And then what happens to the kid is they realize that. And then they work one parent against the other, and the kid becomes a master manipulator. So it can help you with the player, it can help you with parenting, it can help you in every which way. But again, I talk to college coaches almost every day, and recruiting um, is very, very important. Uh, again, I would recommend reading about John Neednagel, www.braintypes.com. And he has a very successful career now working with, I'd say every uh, major sport, except for ice hockey. And, um, you know, when uh, a major baseball team or major football team are thinking about signing someone or drafting someone, and it's going to be a $10 million deal, uh, it's pretty important. And obviously when someone's going to give a scholarship out, they're going to say, gee, I would like to have this player for four years, and I'm going to give them this scholarship. Uh, again, it's just something that I think is very, very useful to helping you do a better job.